Hello, this is Reverend Noel Vanek. Currently, I serve as the part-time pastor at the Community Church of the Fellows in very southern Westchester County next to the Bronx border. But I was your pastor at the Kirk of Bonnie Bray from 1986 to 1992. When I came to the Kirk of Bonnie Bray, it seemed to be a church in transition between having a suburban mindset and an urban mindset. The founding members started the church at the southern edge of Denver, and it was definitely suburban. But by the time I arrived, the Bonnie Bray neighborhood was closer to downtown Denver than it was to the southern edge of the urban sprawl. So together, we began the search for usable strategies for reaching people who were choosing to live in downtown because they liked city life. And I will always remember Pauline Steele, the dear old lady who lived down Steele Street from the church building, who developed cancer and slowly perished. I would visit her almost every week. One summer when my family and I went off for vacation, I said goodbye to Pauline, not thinking that she would survive until I returned. But she told me, I'll be waiting for you when you return, Pastor. And so it was. She died two weeks after I returned, and she taught me a thing or two about the Christian faith. And also, I learned from her how we can sometimes control when we let go of our clutching onto this life. You know, when I think of the Kirk, I'll always remember our Kerygma adult study groups, our young adult gatherings, and mostly how kind you all were to this young pastor and his family. Go with God, all of you, always. Hello, my name is Deb Strock Cuss. I currently live in Indianapolis, Indiana, serving at Geist Christian Church Disciples of Christ. I served the Kirk for three and a half years from the fall of 1987 to the summer of 1991, more than 30 years ago in the role of director of Christian education, working with Noel Vanek, who was the pastor at that time. Janet Sabina, my predecessor, had built and then a then unique and significant children's education experience of 3D Bible stories for children. Each story, each story on a cafeteria tray or in a gold painted gift box they were stored on open shelves in the classroom. The curriculum was being developed based on Montessori principles by Jerome Berryman and so Sonia Stewart. Janet had gone to an innovative workshop or two and built one of the first of what was to become an extensive series of stories known as Godly Play. Knowing and working with this curriculum has served me so well in every church I have worked in over the years, thanks to the Kirk's introduction and innovation. My wildest dream for the Kirk and my prayer actually is as this part of the body of Christ moves into its next 75 years, is that it continue to be a progressive church with a voice for justice, which in itself is difficult in the, this early part of the 21st century in the greater a voice for justice in the greater denver area and beyond a congregation that lives out the belief that a spiritual life is best lived in community may the kirk stand firm as a congregation in the united church of christ and live up to its mission statement to care for the earth as god's holy ground Love God, love your neighbor, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Hi everyone, I'm Susan Cernick and I served as the Kirk's Director of Children's Ministry for seven years from 2005 through early 2012. When I arrived at the Kirk, I was 37 years old and I was looking for a faith community where I could grow and learn and sing and play with kids. It seemed to be a church of possibilities where we could develop a children's ministry, both in the church and in the wider neighborhood. 
My wildest dream for the Kirk is to create a mime ministry that could augment worship and speak to social justice issues. Is that wild enough? As the Kirk looks forward to another 75 years, I pray that this fellowship is not afraid to shake it up, do it differently, and turn things upside down to meet the needs of real people. Thanks for listening. Greetings. I'm Reverend Mark Cernick, and it was my pleasure to serve as the pastor at the Kirk of Bonnie Bray from January of 1993 through January of 2012. When I arrived at the Kirk, I was hopeful about the new opportunities that it provided, but I was also nervous because this was the first church that I would serve as the sole pastor. I came looking for a new opportunity, an opportunity for service and for growth. I came looking for a place and a people that I could teach and that I could learn from. I came also looking for a spiritual home for me and my family. During the process of interviewing for the pastor's position, I was told that the Kirk was known as the little church with a big heart. I found that to be true. I would also like to add to that that it is also a church that is growing in its spiritual awareness. My wildest dream for the Kirk is that it, that you, will continue to grow in spirit and in service and in size because there are many people out there, perhaps more than you realize, who desperately need what it is that you have to offer. As the Kirk looks forward to the years ahead, I pray. Will you please join me as we pray? Holy Spirit of grace, peace, and healing, nurture and challenge this church, these people who give it life, to be and to become what you, O Holy One, dream for them. Amen. And now be at peace and go in peace, sharing that peace and living that peace and giving it to everyone you meet. Hi there, I'm Dana McNamara. I served at the Kirk for five years as the Director of Youth Ministries and the Office Manager. When I was there, I was looking for a position in youth ministry to fulfill this calling that I had from God. And it seemed to be a church of very supportive people who wanted to see me succeed as well as the youth grow in their faith. My wildest dream for the Kirk is that more and more people know God's love through connections and relationships of the bright, shining souls that serve at the Kirk. And as the Kirk looks forward to another 75 years, I pray that it remain a stable community church with a progressive message of love and acceptance for the entire community. Congratulations. So my name is the Reverend Chris Gilmore, and I serve the Kirk as the interim pastor from January of 2012 to August of 2014. When I arrived at the Kirk, I was actually in a pretty rough place myself. I'd been hurt by church and wasn't sure if I was still called to ministry. Within weeks of being with you all, I found myself enjoying ministry in a new way, and I felt incredibly blessed to be with you all. I wasn't looking for anything specific when I arrived, but I did find a community of faith deeply committed to one another. I found a community of faith interested in finding new ways to be church and finding new ways to connect with the community around them once again. It seemed to be a church of open-hearted people ready to commit itself to a bold and joyful future. My wildest dream for the Kirk is that they will continue to be an inclusive, forward-thinking church who finds new ways to be the presence of Christ in the neighborhood around it. And as the Kirk looks forward to another 75 years, wow, 2097, <laughs> when you're celebrating 150 years together, I hope that we will find an earth that is greener, a society that's more justice-filled, a place where school shootings are but a distant memory, 
and those who are gathering to celebrate 150 years will be able to say our ancestors helped make this world the way it is. Congratulations, Kirk. Happy 75th. Will you pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. That was pretty amazing to hear from those whose lives have you all have touched and who have touched your lives in the past and helped create this church to be what it is. Chris said something just then that is easier said than done. He shared with us his dream. I mean, everyone did that in their own way. Actually, most of you have done that since mid-August. All Active Kirk folks have been receiving a poem in their email every day. And most of you answered and offered a poem yourself that had a line that asked, my wildest dream for the Kirk is. And I invited our former staff to answer that question as well. So I went back through all of the poems that we have been reading every day since mid-August and found the one number one wildest dream for the Kirk. The word used most often in response to the, that question, what is your wildest dream from the Kirk, of the Kirk for the Kirk, was grow. Some named that we would grow in numbers, others that we would grow spiritually, still others that we would grow in diversity. But growth was number one. Do you know what the second most common word used to respond to the wildest dream for the Kirk was? Continue. Continue to grow. Continue to be open. Continue radical acceptance. Continue to show God's love. Continue to teach progressive values. All beautiful challenges not to become stagnant all truly celebrations of who we are as a church in this moment, as we celebrate 75 years, if we are to, con to continue, that means we are being faithful now. And these dreams are a call for us to do so into the future. Continue is a wonderful dream and also not very creative. Wild dreams, folks. Wild. I mean, maybe trying to continue to be who we are and hold fast to our values, growing into them is wild in this ever-changing world. I'll give you that. But I did like some of our kids' responses. Their dream is that the Kirk will be famous. That the Kirk, that the Kirk will stop climate change. Some adults did join in on the wild a little bit that we would become a progressive megachurch. And Trish said that her dream was that I would never leave, which let me just say that idea that I would still be your pastor in another 75 years is indeed wild. I know I look young, but, but we were going wild. Wild dreams. I am not sure we're very practiced at dreaming wild dreams. But then we have this beautiful text that Mark read for us, which is an echo of an earlier text in Isaiah, and in some ways is a theme throughout all of Scripture. This is the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. This is a dream, and it is wild. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth, God tells Isaiah. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard or the cry of distress. No more shall there be an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. What we're hearing is long lives, health for individuals, but also, as Isaiah goes on, we hear a new way of being in community. We read, they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. 
This is a world of justice, no exploitation, no oppression. The society will be set up for each one and every one together. And the dream continues with the radical notion of a wolf and a lamb feeding together. Lions are vegetarians, painting a picture of the whole world, humans and animals, and creation living and working together in peace. Now we hear that and we're quick to say, that's not really going to happen. A lion is made to hunt. A wolf and a lamb are not going to have a nice meal together. We cannot imagine a world without the sound of weeping. It's just a part of what this world is. And yet there is this dream, this wild dream woven throughout our holy text, woven throughout all of our faith, not as some fantasy or or a science fiction, or a joke, but as a call. A call for us to dream of the world, not as it is, not the world as it is, and not maybe not even as it should be, but as it could be. For our God takes our dreams and creates beyond our imaginings. This thing, this living thing we call the Kirk began with Dr. William Rogers' dream in the early 1940s. And a few years later, he stopped to talk to a guy who was out mowing his lawn about starting a church in this neighborhood. It was a dream, a wild dream, and more joined in on that dream as they met in a house around the block, filling every room except one bedroom where all the minister's furniture was stored. One of the pictures in the slideshow, you can see the garage door behind the Sunday school teacher or pastor, I'm not sure, the little cloth on it. And then they dreamed of a building. They dreamed of a community. They dreamed wild dreams, but their dreams, I am confident, were not as big as the reality of what they were building. They couldn't have dreamed that 75 years later, we wish it would be worshiping in this place with people joining us and participating live in worship from Alaska and Washington and Vermont every Sunday. They couldn't have dreamed that our energy would be provided by the sun as we have solar panels to support our energy. They couldn't have imagined that this building they dreamed and built would not only continue to provide space for our ministry, but for another church and a faith-based foster care agency. They dreamed big and bold dreams to create this church, this ministry, this place, but God's dreams are always bigger. And yet still we are called upon to dream. You know, this time in which Isaiah lays out this dream, it was not a time of celebration for the Israelites like it is for us today in our moment of celebration. The people had returned from exile to find their community in desolation and destruction. It would have been enough for them to dream of returning to what was before, to go back to how it was. That would have been a bold dream in and of itself, but in the suffering, instead of dreaming backward, God helped them dream forward. This text tells us that God is not just one who creates, but recreates. Or better said, our God is a God who resurrects. And resurrection is always a dream beyond what is possible. There are big and small ways that we have experienced that around here. About seven years ago, we were in discussions about installing a cell phone tower on our property. Some of you were around like, oh, don't bring that up. Some of you might remember. And the neighbors were adamantly against it. There were angry emails and phone calls. There were meetings and a news story and yard signs scattered throughout the neighborhood that said, tell the Kirk no. It was a season of brokenness with the community that we were born into. And while it was other factors, not necessarily yard signs, that led us away from the cell phone tower, the best we could dream was that the signs would come down and we would work toward a tolerant relationship with our neighbors. But in that season of conflict, we talked to each other and we listened and they listened and a collaboration was born between us. And now we are the hub of this neighborhood's community, 
hosting food trucks, creating space for neighbors to get to know each other and us, to connect with local schools and our foster care agency, a place where neighbors come to donate blood and food and school supplies. It began as a conflict and has become a partnership. The same can be said of the struggles we faced in COVID. It expanded our ministry and our reach and continues to do so. And our decision to rent sp the space in the church out of a commitment for financial stability, we shrunk our footprint and grew our mission, our reach, and our ministry. And that, folks, is wild. So maybe I'm wrong about that continue part, not being creative. Because we do have to start somewhere. Our theme for this 75th anniversary is Roots to Branches, because this is a celebration about our roots, where we came from, how we got here, the gifts and sacrifices and struggles and blessings and people that got us here. And although some of who we are would be beyond their wildest dreams, much of what they gave us continues. And at this moment in history, when it seems books and articles and TV shows are not aging well, like almost everything, you're like, oh, we can't watch that show anymore. It's not aging well. We can't read that anymore. It's not aging well. But as we have become more aware of dated language and assumptions, words written of our church in the past are aging beautifully. They continue to ring so true. It's actually wild how much they speak to who we are today. I found this beautiful directory. Doesn't it look nice and new? It's from the year I was born. And it reads, The Kirk of Bonnie Bray is seeking to be a fellowship of persons who express their Christian faith through worship, inquiry, and service. In addition to serving each other within our membership by helping one another in our personal needs, we seek to help meet the needs of our neighbors near and far. Cindy in Alaska, did you hear that? It's already way back in here. We seek to help meet the needs of our neighbors near and far. These needs may include befriending the lonely, sharing with the destitute, encouraging those who struggle against injustice, prejudice, and inadequate education and opportunity. Oh, there was another line. We encourage our members to express their convictions as citizens in the areas of industry, business, politics, education, and world peace, as well as in and through their family and vocational experience. These are our roots, and they are deep and strong and expansive. So expansive that without knowing these words, I had never read these before the last few weeks. It seems that they reach out and our branches reach out in all of these ways. Our anti-racism team is explicitly addressing injustice, prejudice, and inadequate opportunity. Our current mission to pursue depth in relationship is rooted in building community or befriending one another. And worship inquiry, which we name as questioning, and service are all parts of the foundation of who and how we are in 2022. And that, folks, that is wild. 75 years later, we are doing God's work planted in the same place, but branching far and wide in our impact on the lives of those in our community and beyond. But you know how a tree works. The roots and branches mirror themselves, even though we can't always see it. So that tells us that the branches of today will be the roots for another 75 years. And so we must continue the ministry and mission of justice and kindness and faithfulness that we know and that we have inherited. And so, too, we must dream wild dreams. What if we do grow in numbers and diversity and reach? What if we do stop climate change? What if we lead the way in healing the divide in our country through sacred conversations? What if the Kirk finds itself in a world without racism? What if the Kirk never feeds hungry people again because everyone is housed and no one is hungry? 
What if every person in the LGBTQ community knows they are loved by God? It is up to us to dream wild dreams. We have inherited a tradition that knows that we can. And so too, a faith that tells us that God will do and create and recreate and resurrect beyond our imagining. May our dreams be the roots for the branches of the future. Let us dream wild dreams. Happy 75th birthday, Kirk. Amen.